In this tutorial, we're going to have a look on how to generate magnetic skirmions using Vampire. A magnetic skirmions are topologically stable spin configuration that can be displaced by spin polarized currents, for example. These structures can have nanometer size, hence can be easily uh, modeled within atomistic spin dynamics. In order to generate skirmions, we need joushinsky moria interaction, and this can be included into Vampire in two ways. The first way is via the exchange tensor from the unit cell file, and the second way is via an inbuilt function. joushinsky moria interaction appears in materials where the inversion symmetry is broken. So first, let's have a look on how this interaction looks like mathematically. If we write the exchange Hamiltonian in terms of an exchange matrix, then this exchange matrix can be split it into three components, the isotropic part of the exchange, the symmetric and the anti-symmetric part. In literature, the jaroszynski moria interaction is expressed like this, as the dot product between the jaroszynski moria or DMI vector and the cross product between the two uh, interacting atoms. Uh, if we look at these equations, basically we can express the anti-symmetric part of the exchange interactions in terms of the jaloshinsky moria vectors, as here. For an interface, the jaloshinsky moria vector can be expressed like this, where D is the strength of the jaloshinsky moria interaction for that specific layer, uh, Z is the out-of-plane direction and UIJ represents the displacement vector between two neighboring atoms. So, in the next simulation, we are going to include the jaloshinsky moria interaction in our atomistic simulation as a form of an exchange tensor. But first, we need to calculate these jaloshinsky moria vectors. For this, we are going to take the simple cubic lattice and try to express the jaloshinsky moria vectors based on the lattice displacements. This simple cubic lattice, atom number one, will interact with its nearest neighbors. And if we write the displacement vectors, we can basically calculate the DMI vectors using this formula here, and we can have the following uh, directions of the jaloshinsky moria interaction. To add the DMI into our simulations, we are going to use the unit cell file. After we have expressed the DMI vectors, we go back into the exchange matrix. The exchange matrix will be afterward uh, added into the unit cell file, as here. Here is an example of a jaloshinsky moria vector of these atoms interacting with of this atom interacting with this atom. In the red circle, there is the isotropic exchange, and the jaroszynski moria vector for this interaction uh, has a non-zero value just on y direction. Hence, we can express dy and add it into this matrix as it follows. This is an example of how a unit cell file looks like when we have a tensorial exchange interaction. All these materials are on GitHub under the Vampire Workshop. In the Vampire Workshop folder, there are also a couple of examples and tools useful for this exercise of creating skirmions. So now we're going to clone the Git repository that contains additional files and information regarding this tutorial. So to clone it, just add git clone, uh, github.com, Richard Evans, vampire workshop.git and enter. So now we are cloning the uh, vampire workshop folder. And if we go inside the folder, we see that we have either the PDF slides that have been used for these exercises and also some input files that are very useful for the next exercises. So if we go into the input file, we see here we have the skirmions exercise. So we go into 
the skirmions, anti-ferromagnetic, anti-ferromagnets and magnetite subfolder. We do a list and we go to the first exercise, 3A skirmions exchange matrix. So we CD there. And here, there are the files necessary for this example. I'm going to close this presentation for the moment. However, you can find the PDF version of it in the Git folder. Okay, let's now set up a simulation in order to generate skirmions. First, let's have a look at the unit cell file. If you want to know more details about unit cell files, please go back to the previous tutorial in which we explain how uh, these are used in Vampire. Okay, uh, the first line of the unit cell file is related to the unit cell size and for simplicity this was set to one angstrom. Uh, then we have the unit cell directions, the, the atoms inside the unit cell. So for simplicity we have chosen a simple cubic atom, a simple cubic structure with the atoms uh, placed in the uh, origin of the system. And then here we write down the interactions. In this exercise we are going to model a monolayer of a magnetic material. And for a simple cubic structure, uh, just consider neighbor, nearest neighbor's interactions. For a monolayer we have just four interactions. And these are written down here. So to include the Jaloshinsky-Moria interactions, we need to include the tensorial uh, flag. So this is added here. And basically here is a list of the interactions for this material. So as you see, we have now nine values for the exchange because there is a tensor. Uh, the values on the diagonal are represented by the isotropic part and then the jaloshinsky moria interaction is given by these off-diagonal terms. Okay, so the unit cell file is set up. Um, if you want to model more complex material, then you need to generate this jaloshinsky moria tensor automatically or you can use the inbuilt function and I'm going to show you how to use the inbuilt DMI function in the next tutorial. So let's close the UCF file without saving it. And in order to set up the rest of the simulation, we need to have a look at the parameters from the input file. So uh, we have a crystal structure of a simple cubic because this is the way it is set up in the UCF file. We want to model, model an infinite monolayer, so we have periodic boundaries in X and Y, but not in Z. Um, let's set up the dimensions of the system. So because we want a monolayer here, we need to set up the size of the system uh, on Z as the size of our unit cell. And then we can also set up the size in X and Y. And for simplicity, I'm just going to do a system of uh, 20 by 20 atoms, so 2 nanometers by 2 nanometers here, here the material file that this simulation is using is cobalt.material and the unit cell file is file.ucf, which we had just opened before. So now in order to check whether we have or not skirions in our system, we need to uh, find out what's the ground state of our ma magnetic material. And the easiest way in which we can have a gl glimpse of what's the ground state of our system is to do a field cooling, a very slow field cooling. So without a field, the ground state of a magnetic material in the presence of a DMI interaction is a spiral state. However, if you add a field, you break up the symmetry and you can form in this way skirmions. So, um, to set up a field cooling simulation, we need to add the flag into the uh, program. So we have sim program equals field cool. We specify the integrator. So for this particular reason, we specify the LLG Hoyne because there is, it's a dynamical simulation. We want to look at the evolution of the spin structure within um, uh, the relaxation period. So for the exchange interaction we have used in our simulation, the Curie temperature is quite small. 
Hence, after 30 Kelvin, we are already in a paramagnetic state. And the mean temperature, we go up to zero to see what's the ground state of our system. We apply a four Tesla field and we cool for 100 of picoseconds using a Gaussian cooling function. So basically, this function will go from 30 Kelvin to zero Kelvin following a Gaussian shape. We set up here the total time of the simulation, which is basically 300 picoseconds. And then we do some equilibration at 30 Kelvin for about 10,000 uh, steps. And we use a, a small time step of 10 to the minus 16, because we have this kind of um, chiral structure that need more precise integration. So let's go now to the data output. So in order to see whether we have or not skirmians, we need to output the, the, output the spin configuration of our system. To output the spin configuration, we need to enable the config atoms flag, which will give us both the coordinates and the um, spin configuration in separate files. And then we need to say uh, the, the rate in which the code will output these files. And we set up the rate to 100,000 and basically the rate is uh, set up in terms of time steps. So if we have uh, this number of time step, if we divide by this rate, we obtain the total number of files. So at the end of the simulation, we have 30 uh, spin configuration files. And then we also set up um, the rate in which the information will be outputted in the output file of the simulation. And here we outputted the time, the temperature, the magnetization, and then we output the same um, properties on the screen. Okay, so let's save this, WQ. And let's also have a look at the material file. So we have the damping constant is set to one. So the damping gives you how fast the relaxation happens and we set it to maximum just to reach faster uh, equilibration. Uh, we set up our initial spin direction to random. We are in a paramagnetic state. So anyway, the spin configuration is random due to the thermal field. We have the atomic moment set up to 1.72 Bohr magnetons and uh, uh, the, uh, we have some uniaxial anisotropy uh, of this value expressed in joules. So this is kind of a toy model, just to have an idea on how you can generate skirmians. However, you can parametrize much better these models for more realistic uh, materials. So, okay, let's exit this file. And now we need to copy the vampire executable here, and then we can run our simulation. So I'm going to copy the executable from my vampire folder that I have do downloaded from GitHub. I'm copying it here and then we can run. So dot slash ser vampire serial. So we have 400 atoms as we have set it up into the, um, into the input file. So this is the time, this is the temperature, we started from 30 Kelvin and we go slowly towards 0 Kelvin, Kelvin following a Gaussian shape. The simulation has ended gracefully and now we can analyze our result. So first let's do a list ls into our folder. The simulation has generated both the coordinates files and the spins files. So Vampire stores uh, differently the coordinates and the spins because the coordinates of the atoms are not changing during the simulation. The atomistic spin dynamics uses a fixed lattice, so it doesn't make sense to store that multiple times. However, we have different spin files for different timestamps. So if we remember from the while we were setting the input file, uh, we set up the output rate, so we will have 30 spin files at the end of the simulation. So as we look here, we have 30 spin files. 
we see that there are two types of files the meta files and the data files so that meta and that data so the meta files um, uh, we can open one of this this is uh, the meta file at time zero and it contains information related to the time of the simulation so this file was saved at the time of 10 to the minus 16 so just the beginning of the simulation the field that is applied to the system so we have a four tests in out of plane direction the temperature which is 30 kelvin and the magnetization of the system uh, during that time and the spin file corresponding to that to this meta file so if we close this we can also have a look at the dot data file and this file contains the first line is related to the total number of atoms we have simulated 400 atoms and these are the spin directions in x y and z for each atom here they're not stored the coordinates the coordinates are in the atoms coordinates that data file the coordinates are represented by the last three columns in this file we close this okay so let's analyze our data we want to have a look to see if we manage to obtain skirmions so in order to visualize the data first i'm going to show you how to visualizing visualize it using a script i've created called visualize.sh so this visualizing script is based on gnu plot so it will plot uh, the spin configuration with this uh, plotting tool so basically here i have set up a directory uh, plots where all these uh, plots will go to then we want to couple to uh, plot a couple of spin configurations so we are plot we are plotting the spin configuration from 10 to 30 so for this i've set it up this for loop we unite the coordinates file and with the spin file so we paste them together into this new data file and then here we create our plotting script so we set up uh, some um, properties of the terminal and then we set up the color palette palette and we are doing a multi plot so the first plot will be related to the vectors uh, the magnetization vectors which is this one and the second one will be a lateral view of this plot so to run the script is just sh visualize that sh and now it is plotting we need to wait a bit yeah that's finished if we do a list we see this uh, plots folder has appeared here so if we go into this plots folder and do again a list sorry ls we see we have configurations for different time steps so we can all open the last configuration using display so display config 30.png and voila we have plotted the z component of our spin structure and we have seen that we have skirmions forming here so this is the top view so we have an x and y direction and this is the lateral view so y z and the color scheme is given by the uh, z component of the magnetization the other important thing is that we have set up a large field for tesla however in the absence of a field so if we go to the input and set up the applied field to zero we will see that uh, we don't have any more skirmions because there is nothing that can break the symmetry in our system so we set up the um, field to zero we run the vampire so the zero field simulation has finished as well let's analyze the results we can do just sh visualize that sh and then display the final uh, configuration of our system so we go to plots 
uh, let me just clear this uh, terminal display the last configuration so it will be config30.png and in the absence of field the ground state is a uh, stripe domain state however we are simulating a very small system so just 20 by 20 atoms so you've seen these uh, spiral states are not perfect. However, if we would simulate a much larger system and uh, cool it for longer times, then we will able to see nice striped domains. So in order to form skirmions, we need the applied field to break up the symmetry with this kind of protocol. The properties of the skirmions will depend on the interplay between different magnetic parameters such as anisotropy, exchange, temperature and the applied field. So here there are plenty of things to do so you can play with all these parameters with this simple model or a more complicated model and have an understanding on what's the dynamics of these topologically protected spin structures. Next tutorial, we are going to focus on how to generate skirmions via the inbuilt method. And that is more important when you have uh, random structures or a volumetric DMI. So, if this application was focused on interfacial DMI, the next one can be extended to more general systems.